All right, so, oh, f I'm out of coffee. What's going on guys, Sean Don, coming back with another YouTube video, and today, we're getting deep. I'm gonna be uh, vulnerable, authentic. This, this is gonna come from the soul, from the heart. We're talking about mental health, and the one thing that has drastically helped me out over the past few months. Before we get into the meat of today's video, I'm just gonna rip the bandaid off and say, I've been struggling with depression. After my 2023 season ended after an underwhelming performance at USA's, I sat down and did a lot of deep introspection as I normally do. I finally decided to admit to myself that I've been struggling with my mental health over the past season and really over the past few years. For so long, throwing was my passion. I'd wake up each morning and think, fuck yeah, let's go do this shit. This is that shit that I live for, competing. Love it. But those feelings have seemed to fade and it makes sense between the pandemic and the Olympics getting postponed, my stint at the Olympic Training Center coming to a close, and then moving to Phoenix and then Pennsylvania and tearing my hamstring shortly thereafter. I've been lacking stability in my life as a whole and it's taken a toll on my mental health. So a little story time for you guys. For me, the biggest telltale sign that my mental health was declining came back in February as I was preparing to compete at USA Indoors for the first time in a few years. Because of that hamstring tear in late October, the indoor season got off to a little bit of a shaky start, but I still had faith that I could work myself back into good shape and still put on a good showing at USA's. All was good and well leading into the meet. I set a decent season's best at my last meet going into it and training was shaping up as well. I traveled to good old Albuquerque, New Mexico. Fuck that place. Uh, and competition day was finally here Normally I'd wake up on competition day teeming with excitement barely able to sleep the night before Instead I woke up on meet day so depressed that I didn't even want to get out of bed and for what seemed like no particular reason at all It was incredibly unusual for me because for so long in my career competition day is what I look forward to most Now I still got out of bed and did the damn thing and I did have a decent showing in one of the deepest USA men's weight throw competition I think probably ever I don't know. But that morning still really stuck in my head. As the season went on, that feeling of anhedonia still persisted. I would train and I would compete, but I'd never really find the pleasure in it like I once did. And I think I've surmised that somewhere along the way, throwing turned into what was my biggest passion in life to just a job or a way to pay the bills. It was just another thing that I did that felt like an obligation, like buying the groceries or doing the dishes or whatever. And it sucked, big time. So fast forward a few months, after my season ended, I felt like I needed to make some changes. Like I said, I was being more honest with myself after doing some introspection, figuring out that someone's not right. The first of which was moving back to Phoenix to be closer to my lovely girlfriend, Sarah. From there, the plan was to take a month off of training and figure out the funk that I was in. As time went on, I found my mental health declining more and more and it was not fun. The season was over and I no longer had training and competing and traveling to distract me from those thoughts that I was having. I was faced with the reality of my situation that I haven't really enjoyed training and competing for quite some time. I was kind of flooded with the idea of seriously retiring for the first time in my career and that thought I guess sort of scared me. I've built such an identity around throwing as I said it's kind of my self-defined purpose for existence and thinking what life would be like without it without that meaning uh, was low-key terrifying. I have since figured out that what I was going through and still am going through is sort of an existential crisis. Yeah, it was tough. Still is tough. A little bit. I'm getting better with it though, but that's why I'm making this video. So I sat in that void for a few months, kind of feeling depressed and hopeless and just kind of lacking any will to live outside of basic existence. I was really wondering who I am and kind of uh, what I needed to do to find some sort of happiness outside of throwing in my life. Day after day, I'd wake up and feel kind of resentful for having to experience another day without any sort of predetermined meaning or purpose in my life. And I would just distract myself with social media and video games until I fell asleep and then I'd wake up and repeat that cycle over and over again for, like I said, the better part of a couple months. And that was until one night back in September. I don't know what day it was exactly, but I found myself laying in bed, once again, sitting with my thoughts, and one single idea popped into my head. What if tomorrow was a good day? That was the first step among many that I took in trying to kind of turn my life around and figure out who the fuck I am and what I should be doing in life. Now, I woke up that next morning still relatively grumpy and lacking much will to do anything outside of basic existence, but I also 
had a sliver of optimism for the first time in months. <laughs> that day was still far from perfect. I ended up uh, running over a stray can of spray paint in a grocery store parking lot and it exploded and got all over my car. And that quickly sent me spiraling yet again, cursing at my existence. But the idea persisted. What if today was a good day? And believe it or not, it did end up turning around. I found two exceptional human beings at a detailing shop here in Mesa, Arizona, who took the time and energy and effort to help me clean my car off. And they did it for free. All the supplies and everything, they, they, they said, hey, don't worry about it. My faith in humanity was restored. So that idea stuck with me. What if today was a good day? And then one thing led to another. First, I held some hope that something good, even if it was just one thing, could happen that day. Then I began to think to myself, what would a good day even look like? What activities could I do that would bring me joy? How could I spend my time that would bring meaning to my life? outside of just being an athlete. And it took some time, but eventually I was able to start piecing some things together and building some momentum. And I finally got to the point where I was able to wake up each morning and instead of being resentful, I thought, what might the day have in store for me today? With a hint of optimism. Asking myself that question kind of also opened up a frame of gratitude for the things that I already have available in my life. I have a roof over my head, I have food on the table, I have some, but not much, uh, money in the bank account. And most importantly, I have friends and family and a spectacular girlfriend who love me and support me, even when things don't seem to be going my way. So now as I tell you guys this stuff, it feels uh, really fucking corny, but fuck it because there's some science behind it. It's this thing called the reticular activating system. Now, I don't wanna butcher it, so let's refer to the neuroscience life hacking goat, Andrew Huberman, for a little explanation. So the reticular activating system takes inputs from the ears, literally, and from the eyes, mainly, and combines it with specific combinations of neuromodulators and allows you to be either focused on and in pursuit of, or focused on and in gratitude or appreciation of, or focused on and stressed about particular things. So he goes on to explain a real world example of the reticular activating system in use. If you were interested in buying a car, let's say a Ford Bronco, for example, you think, wow, that looks dope, I want one of those. Your nervous system will attune its focus to the acquirement of that Ford Bronco and attach a release of dopamine or serotonin to acquiring it. And it'll start devoting resources internally to helping you achieve that goal of purchasing a 2023 Ford Bronco SE top tier trim, whatever the fuck it is. So the reticular activating system goes into mode Motion. You'll queue up through your subconscious and conscious mind all of the things that you already possess in your current mind and memory and environment to help you attain that goal. And then you'll start seeking those things that you're lacking in everyday life and you can go and get them. So for months, I was waking up in a shit mood, hating my life, resenting whatever was to come that day. And because of that, my reticular activating system, my conscious and subconscious mind were focused on that negative energy, I guess not to get a little too woo woo on you. So I was just kind of perpetuating the negativity in my life by only focusing on the negative things that were happening. Then one day I decided to make a change. Like I said, what if today was a good day? And because of that, my brain automatically started seeking out the activities and things that I could do each day that would give me that positive dopamine or serotonin release. So fast forward a couple more months, that brings me to today. That one simple idea of what if today was a good day kind of gave me the little nudge that I needed to start building some momentum and creating a life that I actually enjoy living. Now that's not to say that like my entire life has done a complete 180 and everything's perfect now. I definitely still have my days where I feel down and depressed, but I still hold hope for tomorrow and I know that I'm working towards something better. Just like training and becoming a better hammer thrower takes time and is a very long process, I have to imagine that developing better mental health is probably the same thing, so I'm all right with that. And I know this type of content is kind of out of my usual wheelhouse. You guys come here to hear me talk about hammer technique and training and watch my vlogs and all that stuff, but I found something that helped me tremendously and I wanted to share just in case any of you guys find yourself in a similar place. If you are struggling with mental health, you're not alone in that. Being vulnerable and opening up to somebody very well may be the first step that you need to take to kind of start working through that and improving your life. I know that was the case for me. So I know this type of content is a little bit out of the ordinary. Drop a comment, let me know what you guys think. If you guys wanna see more of this stuff, I do have quite a few other uh, tips and tricks to improve your mental health, at least stuff that has worked for me. Like I said, this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But yeah, I love you guys. And, and from like the bottom of my heart, for real, I appreciate all the support you guys give me. All the feedback that I got from my video last week gives me a little bit more motivation to feel like I'm actually kind of making a difference, I guess. In a way, this is kind of my new self-defined uh, purpose is to kind of give back and help other people via 
via YouTube. So be sure to drop a like if you guys enjoyed it and share this video with somebody else. So that way I can grow my channel and continue to help out not just the throwing world, but the world at large, if you will. And to finish it off, here's a little clip from Joe Rogan to kind of uh, sum up everything that I talked about in this video. Love you guys. Until next time, Sean Don, signing off. Oftentimes people just need momentum. They need one good day. Right. If you have what? one good day where you eat clean, you drink a lot of water, and you, like you did, you got that day, you woke up, you put your shoes on, you went for a run, you worked out in your driveway, you got a good day in. Yeah. That's sometimes all you need to do and decide, this is what I do from now on. I have good days. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to be another good day, and then I'm going to force myself into another good day. And the next thing you know, I've got some momentum. Right. You got some momentum. You can change everything. Yep. The problem is when people fall into that dark hole, they think that that defines them. But it's, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't define you. It's just you right now. You could be totally different tomorrow.